Chapter 3, The Coronation. I hope things go better for the prince than the queen. Shouldn't you be getting ready to, I don't know, rule the whole nation? I'll have ministers for all that. No sir, Mako, when we get to Ba Sing Se, it'll just be two kooky pals living the life. Yay. I mean, I feel like Mako kind of lucked out here, no? He's getting paid for this? I see the prince is becoming accustomed to the burdens of leadership. <laughs> no royals. Have you received any word on the Avatar's location? Not yet, but I have airbenders all over the world on the lookout for her. Ooh, look at Tenzin. Look at this big shot over here. I got airbenders in different area codes. <laughs> I'm concerned about reports I've heard regarding Kuvira's growing military. Well, she'll be stepping down tomorrow. We can worry about correcting any of her mistakes after that. Right. I'd feel a lot better if Korra were here. <laughs> this guy's got it. He's got it under control. The world needs me. Get over yourself. <laughs> yes. The world doesn't need you one bit. Hell yeah. I worked my butt off busting criminals. But did that make crime disappear? Nope. Let me just say, they did such a good job capturing her older form. Her voice somehow sounds like old Toph would sound. Her posture, her attire, her old hair. Such a great job. Big fan. Basically, you're saying that everything I've ever accomplished has been pointless. I thought Beifong was grumpy. I'm the original Beifong. <laughs> I love how she's bragging about even, like, terrible qualities. She's got to be number one in everything. Well, I was planning on soaking my feet in mud for a few weeks. But I can't stand you being so pathetic and getting your butt kicked all the time. <laughs> yes, this is perfect. Thank you. Yes, thank you. If you want to hug something, go hug a tree. We're here to work. Hell yeah. Bitter work. Am I right? Bolin is back. <gasps> oh my goodness. And Eska's also here. I see you have replaced me with a new girlfriend. Well done. She seems very threatening. <laughs> I love how that's such a high compliment from her. That's what you really need in a girlfriend. Anyone out there looking for love? Find someone who's threatening. See how far that takes you. I would date Kuvira though. I like people who are ambitious. It could work. It could work. I think I date Eska too. There's really nobody off limits for me. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. We have you and your brother booked in the same room, with only one bed. It's no mistake. Desna sleeps in the tub. Oh boy. You're an upstanding citizen again, sir. Don't forget to fill the extra bag with as many of those little soaps as you can grab. Love the lavender scent. One of the richest guys in the world, stealing hotel soaps. What's it like working for Kuvira? I mean, she could be tough, sure, but we're turning around the Earth Kingdom like you wouldn't believe. You remember how bad Grandma's neighborhood in Ba Sing Se was? All that's completely changed. I mean, we are really helping people. Okay, I feel like what he just said is extremely important. In episode one, when he and Opal got into an argument, I said, you gotta keep these things separate from your relationship. And I also said, you gotta separate. Separate your relationship from this political thing. And interestingly, this was actually one of the most controversial things I've ever said in these videos. A lot of you guys replied to me saying that you should not separate relationships with politics, that um, certain political views would be deal breakers for dating certain people. And I think there is truth within that, but I think it's, it's useful to be a little bit more specific about what that is. What matters to me when I'm dating someone or even in a friendship or any kind of relationship is a person's values and how do I think those people actually are at heart and in action. But for me, values and politics are not the same thing, even if there is some overlap and even if they're often confused for each other. My personal point of view is that no matter what anybody else would have you believe, most people actually do start from the place of wanting the best for others and for society. Where they differ is in how to implement that. The problem is that in politics, things are usually reduced to very simplistic arguments in order to appeal to as many people as possible to garner support for votes. And part of that process is reducing the other side to people who are immoral, which typically is not the case. I mean, I think most people actually do want good things. And so I think by immediately eliminating people who are on a certain political side or have a certain um, point of view, you're one, like disqualifying some probably great people who would be like wonderful partners. And two, missing the chance to actually have meaningful conversations. And also like just, you know, speaking only for myself, I have been wrong about political things so often. Like I've been way more wrong in my life than I've been right. And I continuously changed my outlook on things always. So in the past, if I had disqualified people who disagreed with me, man, I would have eliminated some really fantastic people like Bolin. It would be a different story if Bolin was like, you know, hurting people or knew about Kavira's plans, which I'm guessing are like, you know, world domination. But in that conversation, Bolin's showing, he really at heart believes that what Kavira is doing is good for people. For Opal, rather than getting like super angry and just, ah, you're terrible, she should still love him anyway because he's a great person and probably loves her very much and can at least just have a, you know, a normal conversation from him without like, mixing in all this other stuff that's probably not pure and of themselves. It's it's outside parties dictating how they want other people to act. I've been working for Wu. 
He needs to change his attitude about this. It's a good thing. It's an amazing thing. I'd love to work for Wu. Yeah. Cheer up. You're pretty easy on the eyes for a military type. I'll put in a good word for you with the hotel staff. Maybe get you a little upgrade. We've reserved the presidential suite. Ooh. I had you moved out. We moved you into a very nice junior suite. Junior suite? This is an act of war. I always get what I want. Yeah, way to hide your ambitions. I'm expecting like a violent uprising, like a crazy battle at his coronation. But for me, if I'm Prince, the war starts right now in this hotel. Bring it! Tell me what you did wrong. Well, I was thinking that you were gonna- Exactly! You were thinking! <laughs> it's so cool. Pathetic. Of all the avatars I've worked with, you're by far the worst. I know that's only one right. other avatar, but still. It seems like you're enjoying having someone around to beat up an awful lot. Oh, she is. What made you want to drop out and disconnect from the rest of the world? I'm more connected to the world than you've ever been. I see everything. Wow, that's so cool. That's such a nice full circle for the swamp and Toph. My memory's a bit hazy because I've only seen The Last Airbender once, but if I remember correctly, the swamp gave Aang a vision of something that led to him finding Toph. And also they used the, the tree in the swamp as a metaphor for like oneness, being connected. So for a lot of reasons it fits really well that Toph comes here to seek enlightenment and attains it. And also it just fits well with like her physical abilities. Like it's just, it's really cool altogether. Good luck. You're blind compared to me. Long may you reign. Go woo. Go woo. <laughs> For your service to the realm, I would like to present you with the Kiyoshi Medal of Freedom. Her jewel is bigger than his. It was the pathetic rule of kings and queens that caused the Earth Kingdom to descend into such incredible disarray. And there's no way I will allow it to slip back into the Dark Ages. <laughs> Their faces. I have created a new Earth Empire, bringing about a new era of prosperity for my people. We love you, Kuvi Whoa. Uh, yeah, Bolin's now realizing. Anyone who crosses our borders or stands in our way will be crushed. Beautiful symbol with the medal. Yeah, how do you stop her? Like, she has everything. She has all the power. She's got the army. She has the support of the people because she's been giving the mech warriors, among other things. And also, you know what's like a weird thing about this too is what's to even stop? It's within the Earth Kingdom. She has the Earth Kingdom people's support, it seems. The only issue I could think of was that she's not elected, but neither was the prince, so... As Tenzin and, you know, the other people in the world who are sort of, like, you know, enforcing order or whatever, it almost feels like a transgression even to oppose this. That's what I call a sticky situation. Worst coronation ever. At least you're still alive. I'm just not sure about this whole empire thing. It seems pretty aggressive. Believe me, conflict is the last thing I want. I'll stand by you. Kuvira is definitely good at what she does. I know what happens to cities who don't want to hand over control to you. Then you know what's coming for Zalfu. Ooh, oh, that's right, Zalfu's in the Earth Kingdom. I just have to go on, move forward, take decisive action. Let's go shopping! I almost was inspired by him for a second. That's amazing how they can animate such, like, intricate facial expression in one tiny frame. That smile from Bolin just says it all. It's like, I'm really trying my hardest to keep everything together right now. You aren't going to keep working for Kuvira now that she's going against the wishes of the entire world. It seems like she's just a dictator who's taking the Earth Kingdom by force. You're just some glorified butler for some snotty rich bozo. Enjoy licking the king's boots in your junior suite! Ouch. Ugh. That hurts. God, there's so much in there. It's really, really complex. There's so many, like, things here. Firstly, just a trivial note, I love the facial expressions in this episode. Like, Mako's incredulous face. And as for the discussion itself, I think Bolin should not have lost his cool there, but I kind of feel for him a little bit. He obviously has his misgivings about what is doing, but he's just being optimistic and he's hoping, he's putting faith in the fact that it actually will do good for people, which we've seen that maybe it does. And so I kind of don't like Opal and Mako's reaction to this. Come on, it's Bolin. Like, we know Bolin. He's a sweetheart. 
he's not gonna do anything that's like terrible for people knowingly. And so the thing is not to hate Bolin and be angry at Bolin. The thing is to accept him as a person wholeheartedly and then just talk things out. Like I don't like it when people confuse the person for the idea, right? Like you can hate the politics and love the person. And I think that's like being lost a little bit here. There's a wall that's formed there that actually means he's not gonna get through to Bolin at all. He's gonna push him away. You know, a lot of times when I hear people have political discussions, it's like a weird feeling if you step out of it and look at it and you're like, people are just repeating what they've, what they've heard. You know, they're just repeating what they've been told to say and that makes them feel good because they feel like they're doing it for the for the highest good or you know for a noble cause but like part of that not the whole thing but part of it is that you're by doing that you're unwittingly playing someone else's power game and so for me I want to be really careful what I say and like what I argue and where that comes from and is that really from me what feels true to me independently of like established categories I think it's important to detach from these larger games being played and just look at what's right in front of you you know your brother your boyfriend or whatever that is right and like not be so quick to fall into neat little arrangements that were made for you by somebody who wants power over you maybe that's a little bit too cynical but it's just a thought do with it as you wish can't believe him i know insulting another man sweet oh, it's beneath <laughs> low but i think i know what would cheer you up a visit to little bossing say fashion mall Hell yeah. i'll buy you a smoothie yeah come on mako cheer up i never realized how much i missed tormenting the avatar I wish you were putting up more of a fight, but it was still fun. Still picking your toes, I see. I just can't get back in the groove. Probably carrying around that metal doesn't help. What metal? The little bits of metal oh. poison stuck in your body. Yeah, it's kind of a big deal. Let's get that out. I thought Sue got it all out. No, oh, my girls never really picked up metal bending all that well, if you ask me. Wow. <gasps> That's been my problem this entire time. You can get it out for me, right? Who do you think you're talking to? Hmm? You know, I had the feeling this was going to happen last episode and I'm really glad I did. Toph really is the best. You need this sometimes. I can think back to instances in my life where I was just really like messed up. And I'm so lucky I have such beautiful, amazing friends to like help me and like be supportive and sympathize with me. And you think that's what you want. But then when something comes along that just smacks you in the face with truth, you're so thankful for it. And it feels so good. As long as it's honest. And as long as the person's coming from a good place where they're not doing it to torment you or they're not trying to gain some kind of like weird leverage over you or put themselves above you. Like if they're telling you the brutal, honest truth because that's exactly how they see it and because they care, that's what you want. That experience time and time again has been, I think, one of the critical factors in me being what I consider to be like you know a pretty like emotionally stable person and like pretty you know well-adjusted individual having people who will be really honest with you is like a really cool part of that you also need people who are kind to you you know there's like a time and place for each sometimes you just need the bitter truth and that's why top is so perfect for Cora right now no, where did dude. you get those shirts ace is right Kuvira is my hero wow I can't believe Kuvira has merch respect the brooch We need to get you out of here. Earn that paycheck, Mako. You'll have another birthday next year, but I'll never have this day back again. Never. Okay, He's you're losing, losing it. it. Yeah. <laughs> this is the worst day of my life. That's fair. Do you really want to be the king? Do you think you're the kind of person you want as your king? What have you ever done for your people? Mm, there you go. That's the truth right there. That was out of line. No, but he no, he'll like it. You're right. Yeah, that's no what I'm one saying. Talk to me like that. Right. Anymore. Yeah, you know, it hurts, but like, it also feels good. I think having an instinct for that, like finding those kinds of people or finding these situations is really useful long-term. You get over a lot of like illusions real fast. <laughs> All right, that's it. Clearly you want to keep the metal in there. Why would I want poison inside me? If you don't get better, you can't do your job, so you don't have to worry about getting hurt again. Oof, tough cutting right to the bone. I'd love to live in Top Swamp. Can I count on you three to bring Korra home? You can count on one of us. I don't know about these two ladies. What a team. Kavira, watch out. Developing this technology is your number one priority. This is going to change everything. Hmm, she has some other plans besides just power. That episode, man. This is a fantastic start to the season so far. As amazing as season three was, I think a lot of the, the best parts of it were kind of like in the latter half but so far season four is starting out really packed like there's just so much cool stuff here already really looking forward to seeing where this goes thanks so much for watching see you for episode four